Hello, Upper Room. It's Jimmy again. And for those of you that were at the Upper Room on Sunday, I mentioned that I was going to release another teaching and put it onto YouTube. And I'm doing that, unfortunately, because I don't have the luxury of time to wait for a, a more convenient moment to, to teach it at the Upper Room. I want this teaching available immediately uh, because time is sort of at the es of the essence at the moment. So here it is, and I hope you get something out of it. It is in line with the the previous teachings that I've given and the direction of the previous teachings. And it's all about the heart. I've come to believe that God really wants us to look after our hearts right now, to cleanse them, to purify them as much as we can because of what's coming. We've heard many times at the upper room that we are expecting Holy Spirit to come in amazing and powerful ways in, 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 in the very, very near future. And... Um, and this is what this is all about. It's, it's about preparing for that. But let me quote this verse to better explain where I'm coming from. And this verse is from Acts 15 verse 8. And this is where the apostles are talking about the Gentiles, right? So it says, So God, who knows the heart, acknowledged them by giving them the Holy Spirit, just as he did to us. Okay, so what this verse shows us is that God sees the heart. And, and when he sees the heart, he gives the Holy Spirit. Um, he gives his Holy Spirit. What we don't know is how God judges the heart and how, how he sums up the heart before he gives the Holy Spirit. We don't know the intricacies of that, but what we do know is that a, a pure heart and a, and a good heart is important. That's why God has had us focus on the heart, on our hearts. So... Yeah, look, if you guys are, are with me on this and if you're following along with this teaching, this is the latest iteration of that teaching and it's a continuation of purifying our hearts and getting rid of things in there that pollute them. All right. So let me continue now um, from Exodus 20. I'm going to read. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself a carved image, any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them, nor serve them. Okay? For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the father, of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generations of those who hate me. Alright? So, we do, we do need clean hearts at this time. And, um, and of course, I'm talking, I'm referring about spiritual cleanliness. Spiritual cleanliness. Having other gods in our hearts apart from the one true God is idolatry, right? It's not good. And this is what I want to talk about today. So I might cover a few topics because I know I'm speaking to a variety of people coming from different backgrounds. So if you know this stuff already or part of it, then, then I apologize now. But um, uh, please stick with me. This is an awesome teaching and uh, I want to share it as best I can. So... I am talking about idolatry today, idol worship. To begin with, idol worship was rampant among the nations um, that surrounded Israel in ancient times. And most of those nations had actual carved images. And they bowed to them, they sacrificed to them, they performed various acts of worship. And, uh, and, and, and quite um, unfortunately, that, that sort of worship um, often involved the killing of children and it involved prostitution. So it was really, really bad. So the Israelites were strictly warned by God to keep themselves separate from those pagan nations around them so that they could avoid any sort of activity that resembled that sort of vile worship. Okay, Back then, God hated idolatry in any form, but he still hates it today, right? And he hates it for, for, for two main reasons, right? First of all, it steals the attention and the honor that only belongs to God. And secondly, as we saw in Exodus, in that verse I read earlier, God is a jealous God and he does not want to share you and he does not want to share your heart with other gods, all right? Now, in many nations today, carved gods and goddesses are still an obvious violation of this commandment, all right? That's not a surprise to anyone. But... You know, the thing is, like, carved gods and goddesses is idolatry in its obvious forms. But there are other forms of idolatry that we, as, as believers, get entangled with 
that are not so obvious, right? Um, and all of, I mean, we can refer to these forms of idolatry as modern idolatry, right? It's it's sort of modern because this is what even Christians nowadays are engaged with, okay? And um, and this sort of modern idolatry all has one thing at its core, and that is self. It's the worship of self. It's 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 when we worship ourselves when we are at the center of our own lives okay so yes we, we no longer bow to idols or images as they did in ancient times at least i would hope not um but what we do we, what we do do nowadays and, and the mistake we make is that we worship at the altar of the god of self okay um this is a brand of modern idolatry that takes a variety of different forms that we don't actually recognize. We're actually engaging in idolatry and we don't even see it, right? But God does. And, um, and for that reason, there are there are consequences for that, all right? Idolatry is not a good thing. We're going to explore that a bit later. But let's get into that. Like, what, what does it look like, all right? If it's um, If it's something we don't recognize. Modern forms of idolatry include things as materialism, possessions, pride, ego, naturalism and nature, science, knowledge, information, careers, ambitions, friends, shopping, money, relationships, sports, television, music, entertainment, even silly things like Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, even your phone. Okay, now that's not a complete list, right? And, you know, we all engage with these things. We all do just about all of those things, right? So it might be sound, it might sound kind of crazy that these things can be idols. But let's, let's, let's explain things a little bit further. Let's explore things a little bit further. And let's define what idolatry really is, right? So we can better understand it. The sin of idolatry, right, is ultimately a sin of the heart, that's why it's so important, and that's why it falls in line with, with all the other teachings. It's a sin of the heart, right? An idol is anything that we depend on to meet the deep needs of, of the heart, of our hearts, whether that be love, security, worth, or significance, all right? When we try and find these things, when we try and find identity, peace, security, whatever it is, in something else besides God then we have made that thing an idol, okay? Now, most of the things I just described, they are not actually bad. Of course they're not. YouTube's not bad. Um, careers, ambitions, friends, they're not bad, right? But they become bad for us when we elevate them above God in our lives. Does that make sense? Now, I covered a variety of different possible idols, and it's not even a complete list, by the way. But what that list will show you is that apart from obvious idols, the idols that we usually have and the, the idols that we usually worship in our lives, they can't be identified by what they are, right? Because an idol can be almost anything at all. All right, so it doesn't actually matter what an idol is. It really doesn't. Um, because it can't be identified by what it is, right? An idol can only be identified by why you are engaging with it. It's the why that's important. It's not the what. So, to be more accurate, an idol can be identified by the way your heart responds to that thing. All right? So if we're talking about shopping, yeah, we all shop. We all need to shop, right? But if you love shopping so much that you run to it every time you're upset, every time you're depressed, every time you go wrong, if you run to shopping every time you need comfort or peace, then it's no longer just shopping. It's an idol because you've elevated it above God in your life. All right. So you see how that works? It doesn't matter what it is. It What matters is how your heart responds to it and ha and how your heart elevates it and puts it on a pedestal, all right? When it does that, then it becomes an idol. So when you truly and utterly love something apart from God, you crave it and you run to it, especially when you feel down, 
All right. Think about all the things in your life. If you if you if you can think of something like that, it may very well be an idol. All right. That's why this can be surprising. But even very good things can become idols in our lives if we are not careful. Things like ministries, things like hobbies, things like charity work, even things like family. Right. If they take the rightful place that only God should hold in our lives then they become idols, guys. All right? And that's not a good thing. When we emotionally rely on anything other than our relationship with Him to validate us or, or help us, then we are breaking the first and second commandments. All right? Now, um, we have the obvious idols that we were talking about and, and, and some of the not so obvious, but there, there is another class of, of idols, right, that we need to touch on, and that is the destructive kind, the very destructive kind. They're all destructive, but this is these are destructive for the body. And when we worship at the altar of, of ourselves, uh, sometimes this sort of idolatry manifests in self-indulgence. And we see this through alcohol, through drugs, through cigarettes, and also through food, okay? Any form of addiction is a form of idolatry, right? Whether it's hardcore drugs or ice cream, it doesn't matter. Um, addictions are addictions, and uh, they are a form of idolatry as well. So, um, one more thing I need to mention about idolatry as well. Um, yes, it is sinful, and yes, it is destructive. But idolatry also does another thing to you, alright? It defiles you. All right, we've seen that word many times in in the Bible. It defiles you, and what defiling means is that it puts you in a state of being impure. It puts you in a state of being dishonored or desecrated. Okay, to defile something is an act of great disrespect towards God and towards others, and such sin can defile either a person, or a community, or even an entire nation. All right. In Jeremiah 32, 30, uh, 32 verse 34, it says this, right? But they set their abominations in the house, which is called by my name, to defile it. All right. Bringing idols into the Lord's temple was an act of defilement, and this angered God. Today, our bodies are the temples of the Holy Spirit, and bringing idols into them still angers God. All right. And that anger has consequences. 1 Corinthians 10 highlights three very serious consequences for those who persist in idolatry. All right? So, idolatry arouses God's displeasure. It's a terrible offense to God. Okay? Because we are transferring His worship and honor to His rivals. All right? Idolatry can bring physical ruin. It can bring brokenness, pain, suffering, death, and judgment. And idolatry can bring you under God's divine discipline. Those are very, very serious consequences. And we should do all that we can to avoid them. So when we recognize that we have defiled ourselves, we can confess it as sin and we can ask God's forgiveness. And we can choose to turn from it, right? But we still have to deal with the idol in our hearts. Um, and what does the word say about idolatry? In 1 Corinthians 10.14, it says, Therefore, my beloved, flee from idolatry, right? Fleeing is what we have to do. And this is what we're going to have a look at in greater detail. But before we get into it, um, there's something quite important that I also need to say. And, and it's this, right? Because idols are rooted in our own hearts... They are often invisible to others and sometimes even to ourselves, okay? For this reason, idols sometimes seem harmless to us, even normal most times, right? And when we engage with them, society will often tell you that it's perfectly acceptable, even normal, right? But to God, right, these idols and our connections to them are utterly horrible. And they are most certainly not small for Him. Did you know that idolatry attracted the death penalty in the Old Testament? That's how serious it was. In the New Testament, we have 1 Corinthians 6 verses 9 to 10. And it says this, 
Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, idolaters, adulterers, homosexuals, sodomites, thieves, covetous, nor drunkards, revilers, extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. Okay, we've got a whole bunch of very serious negative categories there, but idolaters are among them. Okay, so when we have idols in our lives, it's a very serious position we're putting ourselves in. So, getting back to my original point, our perspective is very important. Um, we have to look at things, these things spiritually, and we have to look at the things we engage with spiritually and recognize that some of what we do is, is driven spiritually and, and, and some of what we do has strong spiritual significance, even though it looks harmless. We can't look at things from a merely physical standpoint. Otherwise, you know, it just becomes another drink or just another meal or just another movie or just making a few extra bucks or just another tub of ice cream, right? Everything, if you look at it in the physical, everything can be played down and minimized to the point that we've become completely blind to it. Okay? Idolatry offends God and it, it harms your relationship with Him. So don't just go by what you perceive in the physical realm. Look at things from a spiritual standpoint. All right, so perspective is important. But now let's have a look at how idolatry works, right? Um, understanding how idolatry works is also going to help us deal with the idols in our lives. Now, when we have idols... In our lives, just like they had idols in, the, in, in, in ancient times, idols require regular sacrifices. And that's because when we have idols in our lives, there are actually spirits involved in, in all of that. There are spirits behind the idols. And what we do is we actually trade with these spirits, right? So we go to them, we go to our idols, and we, we give them our time, our money, our effort, our attention, whatever it is that they want. And they give us something else in exchange, whether it's pleasure, pleasure security, assurance, peace, comfort, or any other reward we are after, right? So we give them what they want, and they give us what we want in exchange. So when we engage in idolatry, we're actually doing business with the enemy. And we are also empowering the enemy. We're especially empowering the enemy in our lives. So not only is this offensive to God, but it is also a betrayal of God. So you can imagine why God hates it so much and why it really has no place in our hearts and lives. Sometimes it's even worse than that. And by that I mean that idols will sometimes require more than just your resources. Sometimes the sacrifice they want from you is some sort of sin, okay? And and, and that is evident in addictions like pornogra pornography, gluttony, or, or other indulgences that result in addictions. All right? Notice that idols will never require you or drive you to do anything good, like read the Word, minister to people, or pray, okay? They either want something you've got or they want you to sin in, in, in order for them to give you what you're after. Um, the sad thing and the unfortunate thing is that it not only costs us whatever it is we're trading with them, but it also costs us the blessings, the life and the destiny that God would have us have. In the short term, idols will steal your time, your resources and your connection with God. In the longer term, they can steal your blessings, your destiny, and leave you with judgment and even destruction in some way, shape, or form. So if you have an idol in your life, maybe even more than one, it could be the reason why you haven't received much from God. It could be the reason why life might be a struggle. It could be the reason things have been stolen from you. It could be why there is suffering and why God may appear to be quiet in your life. Okay, It could also be why your relationship with God is not quite as strong as you might have liked. All right, We need to release these other gods so that we only have the one true God in our lives. We can't have multiple gods. Even if we never realized it before, walking in ignorance is never, never an excuse. Okay? 
we can't rely on the support that our idols have been given us and we can no longer tolerate their presence in our lives not at least not if we want to move forward with God okay and uh, and I mentioned earlier about perspective again correct where, where correct perspective is concerned we've got to remember this getting rid of idols is not just about stopping doing certain things okay it's not about no shopping or not eating ice cream or not smoking all right what it is 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 about maintaining spiritual purity and it's about being entirely consecrated to God but that said ditching idols can be hard work there there is a bit of effort involved but it will honor God it will cleanse you spiritually and it will empower you spiritually it will definitely enhance your relationship with God and at this point you can expect positive significant changes in your walk with him okay so this is where we come to uh, the juicy bit how do we deal with idols and how do we reject them first of all idols may have to be revealed to you because you may be engaged in idolatry and you may not even know it so we have to ask God to reveal them to us right here is a quick clue though what do you turn to when you are in pain what do you turn to when you need peace when you need comfort do you turn into God straight away or is it something else all right I mean that's just a, a simple thing to give you ideas um, but idols may have to be revealed to you but after they have been revealed you may want to just ask a few questions of yourself right with each idol what what do you get from the idols that you've got are there any sins involved and, and what are the consequences of those sins why are you engaged with that particular idol and what does it give you what do you need from it the important thing is that when it comes to idols we need to find the connections between them and our hearts it helps to understand why our hearts are so dependent on them then we have to consider and pray about why our hearts are getting something from an idol and why they can't get the same thing from God all right so we're going to try and figure out and see what our hearts believe about our idols and what our hearts believe about God where this particular need is concerned all right so this this sort of understanding is great to have and it'll be helpful to a, a degree but it, I mean it's not completely necessary so you don't have to go down that route but it's just gonna empower you to move forward a, a little bit stronger I believe so once your idols have been revealed you've got an understanding of the idols that you've got if you have any at all mind you and um, once you understand why you have those idols then we move forward now there's a few more things we need to understand about idols right and that is this resisting an idol in the flesh doesn't work okay so they do require regular sacrifices and in the long term we don't actually have the strength to resist them okay and resisting them doesn't actually make them go away resisting them simply by denying the temptation is just a recipe for defeat okay because it, it it relies on your own strength but your own strength is variable and it, it there's just there is an end to it it's a finite ability so resisting idols in our own strength doesn't work because we need God's help with this and when I say resisting an idol in the flesh all I'm saying is resisting the temptation that comes right so if you're a smoker simply just trying to stop smoking is hard some people manage to do it sure but for for most of um, most of smokers out there it's just really hard so one thing we need to do to help us with this is that we need to understand when it comes to idols that we have agreements with them okay we have agreements with them and we trade regularly with them based on these agreements so deciding simply to stop trading with them is not going to work because the agreement is still in place and they will come after you to honor that agreement they have a legal right to do that and they will come after you to honor that agreement all right so when you try and deny yourself a cigarette or, a, or an ice cream or whatever it is that your idol wants you to do 
the pressure is just going to build and build until you cave. Um, and, and then that's how it works, right? Because they have a legal right. If, when there's an agreement between you two, you have to, you have to follow that agreement. So this agreement has to be broken in order for you to become free from an idol. And in order to break that agreement, it often involves a very specific decision. So again, let me take smoking as an example, right? I was a smoker for a long time, so I understand exactly what I'm, what I'm talking about here. Um, deciding to stop smoking it, um, doesn't work, as I said before. Deciding to stop smoking and deciding to give up smoking completely are actually two different decisions, right? But deciding not to smoke is easier because it doesn't require you to give up the idol. If you decide to not smoke, all you're trying to do is control the temptations and the impulses that come from the idol. Okay, It's just about you trying to control your own idol. But giving up smoking completely is a different decision because it requires you to permanently give up what this idol gives you. All right? It it requires you to give up everything that you receive from the idol in exchange for smoking. All right? I, I hope that makes sense. Giving up idols doesn't require us to stop making sacrifices to them. It requires us to give up the idol itself, which means giving up the pleasures, the escapism, the peace, the relief, the fun, whatever it is that idol is giving you. All right? Do we understand that? When you want to give up an idol, you don't stop doing what it wants you to do. You have to give up the idol and everything it's giving you. You also have to give up the whole agreement you made with the idol. And when you really do that, and you give it all to God, sincerely and authentically, then He will sever that connection with the idol, so that it no longer has a legal grip on you, and can no longer force you to submit to that agreement. Okay? That's the crux of it all. That is the that is what's going to set you free from idolatry. Okay? And when you take it to God and He cuts that connection, you ask forgiveness for having the idol, you repent, and you ask for that agreement to be broken with the blood of Yeshua. You clearly state that you no longer want anything to do with that idol, and that you no longer want what it's offering you. You are going to go to God instead. All right, You are going to try and get what you need from God and not from an idol. So you have to make that decision and you have it has to be a real decision, right? It can't just be words. You see the thing is idolatry is a sickness of the heart. It's the heart that picks up idols. So it's the heart that has to let them go. The decision has to be from the heart. And there has to be real commitment behind the decision to leave idols behind. Um, it can't be merely lip service. It's it's not just a simple prayer that's going to cut you loose. All right, You're going to have to want to give it up. And you're going to have to want to replace that idol with God. So I hope you guys can see the difference. Our focus is not on not doing things anymore. Okay, Whether it's overeating or smoking or drinking or whatever. Okay, It's not about stopping these things. It's about releasing the idols be behind them because we sincerely don't want to engage with them anymore. Because we don't want to anger God. We want to start honoring God instead. All right. So releasing idols is not simply about a prayer. And it's not about stopping stuff. It's about recognizing what is truly going on and then choosing from your heart to give it all up. And why do we have to do this? Why do we have to follow this particular path? Well, here's the thing, right? God will never take anything away from you that you don't want to let go. As destructive and as bad as that thing might be, as 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 much damage as it may be causing in your life and in your relationship with God, 
He will never take it away from you if you don't want to release it. That's why the decision you make has to be authentic. It has to be real. Okay? It's only when your decision to release these things is real that He's going to take it away from you. Okay? If you willingly release an idol like this, then you don't actually need much strength to battle the temptations that come afterwards. Alright? But you do have to let it go. On the other hand, though, if you choose to simply stop doing stuff and you don't want to deal with the idol itself, then, th then this is what's actually happening. You are going to anger your idol because you are not honoring the agreement that it has with you, a legal agreement, and you're going to fight with it. And it's going to come after you until you give in and you continue making sacrifices. And that is an exhausting thing to go through. All right, you have to let it go. You have to let these idols go. And once you get rid of an idol, I mentioned this before, the driving force to engage with the idol to to do whatever it is it wanted you to do. All right, that driving force is gone. It may still be there. There, there may still be residual effects there, but it becomes much easier to make the right choices. But it's, it still may not be an easy ride, okay? Because even after an idol is gone and, and, and the driving force of those temptations are gone, we still have to realign our ways and our habits, habits that may have been formed over years or even over a lifetime. They have to change and we have to turn them to God instead, all right? When we used to turn to idols in the past. This might be hard. Because they required these these idols required regular sacrifices and 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 this builds habits into us, and these habits have to be broken. This is the challenge that has to be dealt with, and and self denial is the key here, and this is the path that we need to take. And at the core of it all, basically, it's the heart that has to be realigned. It has to be real, realigned towards God and not the idol. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Now. When it comes to, when it comes to idols, uh, every idol needs to be handled differently. There is no one size that fits all. Some activities that result in idolatry may simply have to be reduced. Others may have to be eliminated entirely. Okay, um, this is a matter for prayer. How to stop something becoming an, an idol in your life is something that has to be uh, decided between you and God. All right. Something simply can't be stopped, like shopping or eating. Okay, so you're going to have to work with God to to find out how to bring it to a point where it's no longer an idol, but that you can still do it. Now, once once God sets you free from the idols, you, you have to be careful because, yeah, you know, He really does set you free. But if you don't realign your ways and break your habits, you can always go back to the idols. Always, always, always. And um, and there will be times when you'll be tempted to do just that. They'll they'll try and draw you back. Okay, um, so they'll either try, try and tempt you to go back, or uh, or you may end up going back simply by habit, choice, circumstance, or temptation. Right. So once you get divorced from them, make sure to make every effort to let them go completely. If you haven't made up your mind completely to release your idols then it's, it's very possible you'll go back to them. But, but that's okay. We might have to go through this a couple of times before we see how this works and, and before we finally um, manage to let them go. So don't be too hard on yourself. It might take a few goes to let these, these idols go. And when an idol is removed from you, you may, have to, you may have released it, but sometimes as well, they may not want to release you, right? So you you may need God's help to figure out and and deal with any other roots that may be present um, that give the idol uh, a legal hold on you. Okay, so if you find that you're doing everything you know how and you're still having trouble letting go of an idol, there could be other roots present. Okay, so you need to pursue God about that to reveal those things. Um, up until you deal with all the roots. They may continue to require constant and regular sacrifices, and these idols will be active in your life. So be prepared to stand your ground and, and be prepared to um, 
just get help and do a little bit more if necessary. Now, when an idol does come back, if you manage to let it go and God sets you free, and an idol come, does come back trying to tempt you to enter into agreement with it again, remember that the power is not in saying, no, I don't want to do this or that. The power comes in saying, I don't want you as an idol. I want God. Okay? So you reject the idol. You don't reject the temptation it's trying to tempt you with. Then you just turn into Yeshua and you stay there. Okay? And when you do get bothered and tempted by your idols, don't try and just sit there and resist them in your own strength. Right? Take it to God straight away. Because you've got to remember... Idols are God's rivals, and He will not take kindly to them trying to come back to you, especially after He's gotten rid of them, especially after He's broken their legal hold on you. Okay, so remember that God is in your corner, but he, you're not going to get much help from Him if you don't engage Him and invite Him into your battles. All right, so they may come back to tempt you, but remember. That God is in your corner. Alright? But also remember that you can also go back to them at any time. It is actually quite easy. So th we do need to remain vigilant. Now, finally, I'm going to start finishing up here. But very importantly, this is, this is very, very important. Releasing an idol and getting it cut out of your life by God is an awesome thing. It's a wonderful thing. But it's not complete. Alright? It's that in in and of itself is not freedom, but it's the beginning of freedom. All right, when an idol is cut out of your life, it's very important that you learn to turn to God to receive from Him what that idol used to give you. Okay, very very important, and that's why it helps to have answers to all those other questions I raised earlier, because they're going to help you to do that. It's very important that you break those habits and. Uh, and learn to connect with God to such a degree that you can receive what your heart needs. That you can receive what those idols used to give you. Okay? Our ability to do this is going to be an important factor in our success as far as letting idols go is concerned. So pursue Him with these needs, right? After you let your idols go, pursue Him with your needs and give Him a chance to help you out with whatever it is that your heart needs. Okay? This is very, very, very important. If this part's not done, then then you, it's highly possible that you will return to your idols in times of pressure or stress or pain. Okay, because at that point you you no longer, well, you're still not able to get what you need from God. All right, so guys, listen. Very important in all of these things. God has been really gracious in revealing some of the stuff, in all of the stuff actually. But we have to understand his heart in doing all of this. None of this is meant to beat anyone over the head with with uh, condemnation, with guilt or any shame. This is it's got nothing to do with that, all right? In Deuteronomy 6:5 it says you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul and all your strength. And Proverbs 3:5 says trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. Alright? Here's the thing. Idols occupy your heart. And that's why God says to love Him with all of your heart and trust in Him with all of your heart. He's basically saying, get rid of the idols, right? And He's not bashing us and, 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 and forcing us to do that. He's not telling us off. This is a, a cry from His heart. All right, and and basically what he's saying is, love me completely. I want all of you. He loves you so much, he so so jealously. He wants all of you. He wants all of you. This is a powerful thing. It's a positive thing. It's a beautiful thing. Okay, so don't feel guilt. Don't feel shame. Don't feel condemnation if you've identified idols in your heart. Um, this is just a step forward. It's a it's a cleansing step and. Uh, if you go through with it, you're going to find that your intimacy with God is going to increase tremendously. All right. Um, if you do find that you get idols um, in your heart, if you have idols in your heart, I should say, uh, some of us get caught in the trap 
of saying um, I'll drop my idols when I get when I start getting what I need from God but I believe what he says is uh, drop your idols and then I'll give you what you need okay so it becomes like a little bit of a Mexican standoff and uh, and we could end up in that position for years at a time waiting for God to move when in fact he's waiting for us to move all right so take that step forward and try and ditch those idols um, if you have trouble letting idols go remember unfortunately that they are empowering destruction pain and and struggle in your life okay as sad and as horrible as it is to say that it's 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 it's, it's true idolatry has to be overcome slowly as best you can okay so don't feel you have to get it right first time but at, at least start grappling with them and, and start seeing what that's like and uh, keep moving and, 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 and you will get rid of them as long as um, for as long as you have idols in your life you're, you're not actually really free so pray and pursue freedom okay we've been talking about rising up as sons lately letting go of idols is a massive part of that okay you're not going to rise up effectively as a son of God while at, while at the same time engaging with idols okay so rising up as a son and letting these idols go it's a matter of purity of the heart and 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 and, and the sons of God have purity of heart All right, we have to let them go look guys that's it as far as idolatry is concerned I hope that message blesses you and um, yeah as always please let me know if you have any questions blessings to you all